This bat you of Liberty gag does nothing to keep me from getting frustrated at another 40 seconds of logos. Are these suddenly lit candles on some sort of motion timer? Or do they just have a setting for when the joke demands it? Hush, little vampire, don't say a word. I'm 87% sure the pitch for this movie was Adam Sandler will sing in a weird Dracula voice, immediately followed by 400 studio execs putting down payments on in-ground pools and new breasts. I want to kiss your tush! You want to kiss her tush? Considering you're about to change a dirty diaper right now, I'm all sorts of weirded out at exactly how vampires interact with their children. This movie finally answers the question that no one was asking. Do vampires We're right out there. Oh, we never go out there. Ever. Then maybe keep the door shut. Does Dracula have the ability to travel into the future? Because in order to have a children's book like that in 1895, he would have to. My beautiful Mayday, let me wipe all your poop away. Sander lands his second poop joke in the first three minutes of the movie. Can he keep this incredible fecal ratio going for the rest of the film? There's still a lot of movie left, so let's make like Shawshank and see how much we have left to crawl through. Do we finally get to freedom? You thought I was kidding about the pitch, but less than three minutes in, we've already had two Sandler songs. F you movie. And if a human tries to harm you, I'll simply say. Well, that didn't rhyme at all. <gasps> Zomjectification. But of course, be smart. No bonfires. No firework shows. Fire shadowing. Yeah, it's a mess back there. Where exactly is this pumpkin head entity spending the cash Wayne just gave it? Welcome to Hotel Transylvania! Roll undeadits. I have personally designed the spectacular schedule of events, all leading to my daughter's birthday extravaganza tomorrow. So you're just forcing the guests to participate in your daughter's birthday celebration? Dracula might be losing some of these vacationers to sandals next year. There is a clogged toilet in room 348! So many poop jokes. You know what, let's just send them all right now so we don't have to worry about this sh anymore. A sentient sponge that gets off and absorbing urine? <sighs> we aren't even 10 minutes into this thing, and I swear I'm already losing my will to breathe any more oxygen from this planet. Come on! Does that look like Frankenstein's head? All right, everyone. Say it together now. Frankenstein was a scientist, not the monster. We all good now? Can we move on? So Frank's pieces are just connected by flat surfaces? No wonder he falls apart so much. Monster stink. You're kidding me, right in my lobby? Dracula didn't seem too concerned when Wayne's kids were pissing all over the furniture, but this is where he draws the line. If only Martha were here to see this. She's always here, Wanda. In your left breast pocket? Get it? It's a toadstool. Nice visual pun and all, but it has nothing to do with this movie, and doesn't even adhere to anything resembling the laws of amphysics. You're old enough to drive a hearse now? You're old enough to make your own choices. You have to be 118 to drive on your own? That's a lot of years of having to drop Mavis off at scare camp. Wait, why did this shirt shrink when she turned into a bat, but the hat didn't? Guys, guys, she can handle it. She's a Dracula for Pete's sake. But seriously... Watch out for fire. He says in a room with about 100 lit candles. Also, in 118 years, Mavis has never thought to sneak out. Don't you bring E.T. into this, Mavis. Don't you dare. Damn it! It worked. Now my baby will be safe forever. So a father demonizes the outside world by creating fake creatures to keep his kids in a secluded community forever? No one told me this was actually a remake of The Village. Hey, you don't need a mannequin. Leave the mannequin here. Well, now we know where Andrew McCarthy has been all these years. Why is the revolving door still spinning? Wouldn't it be hitting them continuously? You have to leave. Oh no. Dracula could easily just burn right past these monsters, but instead needs to make this situation more difficult than it needs to be, because Sandler can't resist a resolution better suited for a sitcom than a motion picture. I can't kill him. It would set monsters back hundreds of years. Considering no one else knows the monsters or hotel is here, seems like a non-issue. Not right now, Quasimodo. Why is Quasimodo here? Isn't he technically just a human with physical deformities? In fact, I'm pretty sure the whole point of the story was that he was not a monster, even though everyone treated him like one. Dracatui! How did Jonathan manage to monster mash this flying brain? We've only seen them flying above the floor. What was it even doing down there? Where did the shrunken head on the doorknob come from? It wasn't there when Dracula and Jonathan initially entered the room. Is that real about the garlic thing? Yes, I cannot have it. My throat swells. If Drac really sees humans as the enemy, why is he being so upfront with this one about his weaknesses? Come on, man. Loose lips sync overacted, infantile, animated Adam Sandler movies. At least, I think that's how that quote goes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I'm a little lost. Yes. Yes, I know it's your honeymoon. I apologize. Go go back to doing what you were doing. Insects. What's happening? I'm terribly sorry. It's my mistake. What is wrong with you people? Seriously, you have a secret door that opens into the honeymoon suite and another that opens into the shower? Are we sure Drac didn't build this hotel because he's a giant vamp pervert? Also, bare bones humor. Hey, oh. what are you doing here? No, Mavis, what are you doing here? Is one of your vampire powers plot advancement? Are these monsters gonna kill me? Not as long as they think you're a monster. Huh? That's kind of racist. Johnny Stein would be excellent at CinemaSins. What brings you here? Oh, uh, party? 
planner. I get that these monsters haven't been around a lot of humans, if any, but they've been around monsters enough that they should know Jonathan is not one. Even though the whole thing with Johnny is a ruse, Mavis' surprise party isn't. So why is she there watching a potential band that could be playing for her later? Little princess gonna be a queen. Legal bad lady turning 118. Whoa, whoa, whoa there, Lonely Dyland. Did you just reference Mavis now being legal and everyone's cool with this? F***ing monsters. Also, Awful Band somehow knows new song when a stranger hops up and starts it cliche. N27. There's no N27 in bingo. The N column has numbers 31 through 45. I call bingo shenanigans. Shenanigans? Not sure how Bride of Frankenstein here has five different bingo cards that are identical, and furthermore, how they all have different numbers stamped on them. Why do these flies' eyes have pupils when earlier they had more accurate compound eyes? Also, since when is charades a spectator sport? Are there professional charades tournaments I'm unaware of? If I wanted to just sit and watch someone flail their arms around like crazy for no reason, I'd watch a YouTube vlogger. This movie has an actual scooter montage. The monsters are taking turns riding a scooter to the tune of sexy and I know it. It's literally the only instance of LMFAO that happens in this entire movie. Relax, no one suspects anything. The only thing that looks weird is how much whispering you're doing. Except this has happened quite a few times and no one has noticed until now. Oh, that, that was not fun. Everyone running, jumping, swimming with no order. That was the opposite of fun. So it was the ridiculous six of parties. Look at me. You remember nothing of this encounter. You've had mind control powers and not used them this whole time? The whole time? Follow me. Oh, no, no, Mavis, I can't. I have to leave. You sure? It'll be fun. Okay, the power of boners compels you. Someone help me understand the geography on this. If he came out of a chimney already, how has he not already seen this view? I'm only gonna be, uh, 121 once, right? Gotta live it. Yes, but since vampires can't really die very easily, I'm guessing they haven't steeped themselves in the deep philosophies of the YOLO. Oh man, the sunrise from here must be amazing. Ow. If I know my astronomy, and I'm sure I don't, the sun actually starts by lighting the highest point of an object and works its way down as it rises. Seriously, go watch the sun rise from your roof. I'll wait. Pick a joke, movie. Does the sauna create steam from these coals, or is it the dragon you showed me earlier? Neither joke is that funny anyhow, so why contradict yourself? 17 to 48, 16 to 47, 19 to 50. Wouldn't it make more sense to have each table go to the spot nearest to them, since they're all the same? Also, is the tablecloth or the table the ghost, and how exactly does that work? Neither of those items are alive in the first place, and therefore can never die and come back as a ghost. You catch the human, and then I will make human pot pie! So, these monsters do still kill humans? Pick a lane, movie. Where did all these extra tables come from? Those tables be breeding like rabbits. Who is that guy, Sir Breaks a lot? Sir Breaks a lot is what you're going with? Really? You sure? Because the Knights of the Round Table joke was right there. Do you have a location on Quasimodo? Yes, sir. They're heading through the lobby towards the kitchen. Wait, so these Knights of the Living Dead are some sort of Alexa mesh network thing? And Quasimodo just happens to be walking through a hallway with several of them? Well, that's certainly convenient. Why did that hurt me? Because in an Adam Sandler movie, getting kicked in the nuts is one of the greatest honors that can be bestowed upon you. The only way to rank higher is if you go full Sandler and take genital trauma while farting loudly, telling a poop joke, and being embarrassingly naked at the same time. Ozzy wins again! When you bump with the hump, you land on your rump! And if I had a bridge, I would jump. I'm sorry. The last thing I wanted was to hurt her. Or you. Because I met all of you a few hours ago. English, please. Your voice is really annoying. See, that's funny because it's Fran Drescher saying it. Jesus, this movie. Wait, no! Get off me! The water in the pool didn't do anything to Jonathan's hair or makeup, but somehow Esmeralda jumping on him does the trick. He says, beholds a human. Why the 2319 panic, though? Sure, they're finding out he's human, but they've been literally partying with him all night. They know he isn't dangerous, right? But the monsters brought luggage and items, right? And where are they going to walk to? Two lonely bats crashed in the night. Near reading. First you tell us humans are bad, now they're good. But who undied and made Drac King? Do any of these monsters think for themselves? Don't they all have homes where they might come into contact with humans and make up their own minds? He got into a car at 86 Fiat. It needs a little transmission work, but otherwise okay. Where did Jonathan get the car? He was mountain climbing before he ended up at the hotel. If he had a car, he would have just gone back to it and never even seen the hotel, right? The real Frankenstein! We know! We love you! Can you sign my tour? So everyone is just fully on board with monsters being real in this universe? And why would these humans be, um, carrying a torch so hardcore for Frank? Did monsters not actually do any monstering in this universe? And if not, how do they even know what the hell they are? Synchronized cape lifting! Okay, okay, I must do this! Commercial airplanes retract the landing gear immediately after takeoff. Unless, of course, you install the ones with a sense of slapstick comedic timing. Dracula! I can't understand you! 
What? My hand's in a tan shoe? So, considering Drac has been flying in direct sunlight for the last three minutes, and now he's carrying on this completely nonchalant and nonsensical conversation in full sunlight, either that whole vampires in the sun thing is just a minor inconvenience, or a movie has too much moving to do to be bothered with rule consistency. Oh, sure, earlier when you needed to mind control Johnny, a couple of millimeters thick contacts prevented it, but here you mind zap through about an inch of heavy duty airplane glass. It's almost like the movie is trying to contradict itself. I hope you can hear me and forgive me. But even if he can, Jonathan is already on the plane, so Mavis is going to have to give him a minute. Quit your whining! I'm burning up out here! How is Dracula still speaking through the pilot if he's not in front of him to give him the hypnotism eyes? Do you really mean it, Dad? Go make your own paradise. But maybe somewhere with less sun. I thought I found a love, but she was just a fling. When did we decide all animated movies had to end with a musical number? Is it a way to trick the audience into thinking they had more fun than they really did as they leave? As if a full two minutes of assorted auto-tuned monsters forcibly rhyming the word zing is going to cure somehow the 90 minutes of nothingness that came before it? Better bring y'all happening, y'all! Pay attention to the undead king, y'all! The Beastly Boys. I'm Schmidt. My pants are full of duty. Yeah. My mom bought you when I was just 13. The brightest red sweatshirt that... Oh, we never go out there. Do not go in there. Welcome to Fright Night. For real. When there was no crawdad to be found, we ate sand. You ate what? We ate sand. Come on, fellas. You you know that I haven't sung in public since Martha. What does that mean? Why did you say that name? Ooh, that's a bingo. And if I see Van Helsing, I swear to the Lord I will slay him. 